Well, hello and good afternoon and welcome again. At this ministry, we always try to remember anniversaries and we want to see whether they're appropriate to what we're trying to do in this ministry, but what we can do to do a little short video clip. And I want to concentrate today, if I may, on these two American gentlemen. You will see Cardinal Francis Spellman, the American Pope, and Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, television's first preacher of note. And these are photocopies from two articles that I wrote on both of these American clergy. Now the interesting thing about both of these guys is that they were both Americans, which is quite right. He was a cardinal of the Archdiocese of New York, and Fulton J. Sheen was, I suppose, what we would call the auxiliary. And both men lived in the same archbishop's house. The second point is that both men loathed each other. Spellman was a very short, roly-poly little man. Sheen had the good looks, the statue and so forth. And this helped him very much when television was coming in. And I called him television's first preacher of note because he was one of the first clerics to sort of like the camera. And the camera liked him to sort of go on television and do a little spot once a week. Spellman couldn't do it. Spellman was ordained by Archbishop Pacelli. Now, Archbishop Pacelli was the nuncio in Germany. I'm going to come to him in a minute. But he ordained this man. So there was a bond between being ordained by a future pope and Fulton J. Sheen. And as I've seen, Sheen had the good looks. And it's said in my article that the ratings on his uh, television show outdid Milton Bell and Frank Sinatra. Can you believe it? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I want to concentrate on a lady who knew both of these gentlemen very well. So much so that she actually wrote about them. And her name is uh, Mother Pasqualina. And this is a little book I came across. There she is there. Mother Pasqualina. She was a Bavarian nun who, at a very early age, probably in the 20s, went to work for the nuncio in Germany, who was Archbishop Pacelli. And she was to stay with him really until 1958 when he died. And he actually died next week on October the 8th, 1958. So we're looking at the 51th anniversary of the death of the controversial Pius XII. Now she knew him through all of this and she also knew these other men when they came on their many, many visits to Rome. Spellman knew her because he was working in the Secretary of State's office in Rome. He'd been sequestrated, I should say, from the Archdiocese of New York to go and work in Rome. He had a flair for languages, apparently. So he knew her very, very well, and he calls this some of the seven happiest years of my life. Now, she was a very formidable lady, and this title, La Popessa, it's rather a malicious title. It was given to her by a man called Cardinal Tisserand, and Tisserand was a very powerful man in the Vatican, and he didn't have much time for her. She has been called very devious and very cunning. Now, wait a minute, you're going to say, Brother Battelle or Mr. Battelle or Patrick or whatever, I'm getting sick of you calling all these people cunning and so forth. Not my words. Not my words at all. She was cunning, but I'm only quoting this gentleman, John Cornwall, one of the most respected Catholic writers this country has ever produced. I don't call her cunning. I never knew the good lady. But if I may just turn to something here, I can show you this reference with quite a rare photograph. And I'm opening it up now. And if James can pan into here, you will see Sister Pasqualina, Pacelli's quote, extremely cunning housekeeper of 40 years, pictured with her two assistants, end of quote. And you can see the good lady there. And if James can pan across to the left, you will see the man who she served for almost ooh, 20, 45 years. There he is as the nuncio in Germany when she went to work for him. And there he is below, still with Italian prisoners of war. Now, Sister Pasqualina, in her duties, was to sort of look after the Pope. But she also saw it as part of her duties to shield anybody that she didn't want coming in there. But her door, apparently, or her kitchen door, she had this vast kitchen, was always open to these two men. This man and this man. She particularly liked this man, as I say, because he used to bring her American candies and chocolate and cakes and things like that, which were a little bit scarce in Italy. So she liked him, and he was also her listening board, I suppose, of what was happening to the church there. 
And she does relate in her book, and I'm going to come to her book in a minute, that these two feuding clerics are somebody called Laurel and Hardy, rather unkind but perhaps true, were always feuding. So much so that one day, she says in her book, and if I may put that down and reach for La Popessa, she says that the big argument was that where some money had gone in the diocese. So both men, she said, came to see, as she says, the Holy Father, the Pope. And she says both of them arrived. Pius apparently tries to sort of mediate in this and both start arguing and everything about all this money. It's all in her book there. I'm not going to go into it too much there. But she does say here that the Holy Father must remain must remain above any dissension between these two good shepherds, Pius told her. Holiness, we cannot turn a deaf ear to Emma Spellman. Now this is interesting because Pius listened to them for a while, and if we can turn the page over here, he picked up the telephone and spoke to no less a person than President Eisenhower. And Eisenhower was to tell him that this disagreement about money through Spellman was quite all right. To err is human, he says, but to forgive is divine. Not so with the two arguing clerics. But once the cardinal and the bishop were apart from the Holy Father and back in Pasqualine's office, Spellman was more enraged than ever. I will get even with you, the cardinal shouted angrily at the bishop. It may take six months or ten years, but everyone will know what you are like. And if you turn over the page, you find she remained characteristically unruffled. Jealousy is the tribute mediocrity pays to genius. <laughs> I like that. The bishop arrogantly retorted, looking squarely at Spellman with his penetrating deep eyes, casting a salute and a smile at Pasqualina. Sheen walked out. Spellman got his revenge. Not long afterwards, Sheen was out of Spellman's Darson house. So you can see this was smouldering all the time. But the other interesting thing about this book is that not only did she know these guys who were sort of coming out about it, but she knew the future popes. She knew Ron Carley. And she says of Ron Carley, Ron Carley, as you remember, was the uh, ambassador's, uh, res uh, the, the Vatican's uh, representative in Turkey. And she says of him uh, that he was qu quite a nice old man, she says, but um, she thought really he was destined for uh, the future life. So she didn't have much to say about him. She didn't have much to say about Montini either, uh, Archbishop Montini. Seems he was always hanging around the Vatican kitchens, I suppose, looking for cookies and so forth. So she dismissed both of these men. And the man she wanted to succeed was, of course, Spellman. But, of course, it didn't happen. Ron Carley came in, followed by Montini. Now, as I said earlier, this was a very, very powerful woman. And if we go back to her little book there, you can see this from a private collection, Sister Pasqualina's favourite photograph of Pius XII. And it has private collection. Very, very interesting because most of the photographs of all popes are the copyright of the Vatican. And it does have on the bottom there, copyright Vatican. This is from a private collection. And if I can just highlight some of the pictures here of Sister Pasqualina. There's the man I talked about earlier, Cardinal Tisseron, the Dean of the Cardinals. He had no time for this woman at all, and she had a lot of time for him. And it has since emerged, possibly in the last 15 years, that he may well have been a spy. Possibly for the German secret police, possibly for the French secret police. More like the French, because he was French. And there you see he's arriving at Castle Gandolfo, Pope's residence, where Pius had just died. Got all his gear there, and his bag there. And in his bag, you can see here, he has the silver hammer. Can you see him there? There's the dead Pope. And he actually blesses the dead Pope. But before that, he actually taps his forehead with the silver hammer and asks him three times, are you dead? And of course, he doesn't get any reply. Uh, this is Cardinal Taviani here of the right wing. He clashed many, many times. The Vatican Council had no time for it. Thought it was all communist inspired. Tisseron got his own back on Sister Pasqualina because he called her in afterwards and he says, I want you out of the Vatican within hours, perhaps by midnight, and take those birds with you. Birds, you say? What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about two of the fa fans, I suppose, well, not fans, but two of the um, pets that the Pope had and always shared a meal with him, that he were his canaries. And she left unceremoniously out of the back door of the Vatican after all those years, clutching a little suitcase, we're told, and a little cage with two little songbirds in there. There's another picture of her there, we can see there. There she is there, 
She is arriving in Rome in 1963 to attend the funeral of John XXIII. She didn't think much of him either. But very, very sad, unceremoniously booted out of the Vatican, where she lived with a German order of nuns. Um, see if I find some more interesting pictures to highlight this talk there. Now here's an interesting picture I should have showed you earlier. There's our two men that we're talking about. Fulton J. Sheen, you can see the matiny good looks, bids a farewell to Francis Cardinal Spelman at Idlewild Airport as he flies off to Rome. Two men, eaten with arrogance, eaten with jealousy, both jealous of each other. For Sheen, probably will be remembered for the television documentaries that he did. Slight thing about um, Spelman was, it was rumoured possibly he was homosexual. I don't say that, but it's put out on the American homosexual site. But it shows the arrogance, the conceit of all of these men. And boy, oh boy, as somebody said, didn't this woman get even with them? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Try 